Hello, hello, welcome to HimDev Development, where we are preparing the best tutorials to make your mobile application development easier and more efficient. The goal for this tutorial is following. We'll create an image gallery. We'll work with grid view and silver grid components. We'll go through all the ways to create a grid view, grid view count, grid view extend, grid view and grid view custom. We'll also learn how to retrieve the list of images from the Flutter folder. First, we open a code for our existing application from the previous tutorial and we open the portfolio underscore gallery underscore sub underscore page dot dart file. This will be our entry file for this tutorial. We run the application to see the progress so far. We will create a new assets folder for our application. In it the images folder and we will put a few images in this folder. In order to get information about these images to our Flutter application, we open the pubspec.yaml file. We define the assets section in the Flutter section and we set the path to the images. Now we can go back to portfolio underscore gallery underscore sub underscore page dot dart file. We will delete the portfolio gallery subpage content and we create a build method in which we return the underscore build content method. First, in the underscore build content method, we return the grid view widget using the grid view dot count constructor which has the required cross axis count parameter. This parameter specifies the number of widgets in a row. Another attribute is the children attribute where we insert the image.asset method with the path to the file in the assets images folder. This method creates the image. We pull the image creation into the underscore build image widget method and we set the image path as an input parameter. We launch the application and we can see that it still works the same way. Now if we want to add another image, we can call our underscore build image widget again with a new image path. And we could continue in this way, however, this would not be a very elegant way. It would be much better to have a list of image paths. If we had such a list, we would use a function map to select a specific path from it and insert it as a parameter for the underscore build image widget method. Let's go to get such a list of image paths. We create the underscore load image paths method to retrieve image paths from the assets images folder. We will use default asset bundle to determine the assets and load asset manifest.json here. The asset manifest.json represents a list of all assets in the application. We load it into the JSON string manifest content JSON using the async await mechanism. Then we make a map manifest map out of it using the json.decode command. Subsequently, we select only those assets from the map which are present in the assets images folder. Then we return a list of paths to those assets. Once we have a list of paths to our images, we can edit the build method. Since the underscore load image paths method returns a future object, we'll use a future builder where we'll define this method in the future attribute. We also define attribute builder. When data is retrieved, we call the underscore build content method to create the content of this widget. Otherwise, we return the progress bar, circular progress indicator. We 
you launch the application. We can see that all images are successfully displayed. To make each image the same size, we define the fit attribute and we set it to the box fit.cover. Let's test the number of widgets per row. We'll also set other attributes. The main axis spacing attribute defines the space between rows. The cross axis spacing attribute defines the space between the columns. We also set the padding attribute that defines the space around our grid view. If we just want to get rid of the upper space, we set padding to zero. We can also change the scrolling direction using the scroll direction attribute. In the underscore build image widget method, we wrap this image widget in the clip direct widget so that we can round the corners of our images with the border radius attribute. We encapsulate the clip direct widget with a container widget to which we set a decoration attribute. In this attribute, we insert a box decoration in which we define the shadow around the container using box shadow. Box shadow has the following attributes. Color, which represents the color of the shadow. Offset, here we enter offset 2,2, where the first number represents the offset on the x-axis and the second offset on the y-axis. Spread radius, this is the attribute that defines how much the container should be inflated before using the blur effect. Blur radius defines the amount of blur effect. Another attribute of box decoration is a border radius by which we define the rounding of our shadow, box shadow. We'll also test the application in the landscape mode. Another grid view constructor is gridview.extend which has the required max cross axis extend attribute which represents the maximum extent of widgets in the cross axis. The difference between gridview.count and gridview.extend is that in gridview.count we define the number of widgets per line. So even if we rotate the device horizontally, widgets may increase their size but the number will stay the same. For gridview.extend we set the extent. This means that when we rotate the device horizontally, the size of the widget is more or less kept, but the number of widgets per line increases. With the gridview.extend constructor, a layout is responsive. The gridview.extend constructor, like gridview.count constructor, is just a simplified form where we do not need to define delegates for gridview. They are defined in the background automatically. However, there is an option to define delegates to gridview. For that, we use the gridview constructor which has the required grid delegate attribute. For example, we can put sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent in this attribute, which is actually used for the grid view dot extent constructor automatically. And we move the attributes from the grid view to the delegate. 
we can see that the app still works the same. We can also change the gridview.count constructor to the gridview constructor. For that, we put the sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count to the required grid delegate attribute. This mechanism is automatically used for gridview.count constructor in the background. So far, we have defined an explicit list of items. However, if we want to build items as we scroll, which is, of course, more efficient, we can use the gridview.builder constructor. This constructor has again the required attribute grid delegate in which we keep the sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent and a required item builder attribute that returns the index of the displayed item on which we dynamically create the widget. We also define an item count attribute which represents the total number of items which we want to dynamically create. The last grid view constructor is gridview.custom, which has two required attributes. Both of these attributes are delegates. The grid delegate is a delegate that controls the layout of the children within the grid view. And the children delegate is a delegate that provides the children for the grid view. For example, sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent with the required max cross axis extent attribute can be set for the grid delegate attribute as well as the sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count with the required cross axis count attribute. For children delegate, we set the sliver child list delegate that explicitly defines its children. Again, if we wanted to make this process more efficient and create children during scrolling to save memory, we could set the sliver child builder delegate for the children delegate attribute. Here, however, we also define the number of items using the child count attribute. The grid view widget is useful if we don't work with multiple sliver widgets. However, if we need to define another sliver in the custom scroll view widget for the slivers attribute, we must use the sliver grid widget instead of grid view. In our case, we have a sliver up bar that works with the grid view only because we use the nested scroll view widget in portfolio underscore page to dart file. However, we'll show an example how we can define a sliver grid to get the same effect as the grid view widget if we have only a custom scroll view widget and not any nested scroll view widget. However, sliver grid does not have a padding attribute. The sliver grid is very similar to the last grid view that custom constructor. It also has two required attributes. The first is grid delegate, which works exactly the same way. And the second is a delegate that works just like children delegate for the grid view that custom constructor. To add sliver grid to our class, we need to modify the build method. We'll wrap the underscore build content method in the custom scroll view widget where we define the sliver widget list for the slivers attribute. We put to this list the underscore build content method which returns the sliver grid widget. We are missing a padding. To achieve the desired padding, we again wrap this method with another widget and this time it will be a sliver padding widget to which we set the desired padding. We test the final functionality. And with this is our ninth part of this first series of Flutter tutorials completed and of course you can find the complete source code on the GitHub as well as on our website himdeve.com where you have a detailed description of everything we went through in this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye bye.